still have a lot of concerns about the inflation. The groceries are outrageous, gas is outrageous. People need to really budget what they're doing because of the inflation. Americans, as you can hear right there, are still not pleased with Bidenomics. Now the president appears to be blaming the media. When a reporter asked about his economic outlook heading into 2024, President Biden had this to say. About the economy, sir, what's your outlook on the economy next year? All good. Take a look. Start reporting it the right way. Uh, the president is also saying that we're looking at the wrong polls. I mean, call me badly read, but I haven't seen any polls that show him doing particularly well. And then on the economy, uh, we can put up here the Gallup poll, most recent one. 68% of Americans say the economy is getting worse. Only 28% say it's getting better. So we're not reporting incorrect news. We're reporting what the American people feel, Kyvan. When inflation went up, those prices stayed up. And then with the energy costs and others, they've stayed up. The energy costs like price at the gas pump and those things have went up and down. They're still higher than when Joe Biden came in. And those are the things that are the reality for people when they're seeing the economy. And it's interesting enough to, you know, to discount polls, to discount reporting. But it is becoming you know, evident anywhere you look, even among mainstream media, which does cover the president very well and gives credit to most everything that he does. They're acknowledging the fact that most Americans are not happy with the way that the economy is for them. All right, guys. So this video is dedicated to the communists, the socialists, <laughs> Democrats, liberals, woke revolutionaries who don't understand the economy or business. OK, because. People like Joe Biden, for example, are blaming uh, the media for how they're reporting on inflation uh, instead of the actual inflation in and of itself, okay? And the fact that, hey, the cost of things are going up, okay? Now, the rate of inflation in regards to how fast prices are increasing may be going down, but that doesn't mean that prices themselves are going down across the board. No, they're still increasing, and they increase uh, rapidly, significantly in a very short amount of time. Okay. The Biden administration does not seem to be able to grasp that concept. Not only are we getting price increases from inflation, but we're also seeing, uh, price increases happening because the cost of labor is going up thanks to liberal policies like minimum wage increases that are happening in, uh, communist states like California, in which you have these fast food chains that are affected by these minimum wage increases starting to cut jobs. Okay. They're cutting jobs because of the minimum wage increase. Take a look. The minimum wage is taking a big jump to $20 an hour for fast food workers employed by big chains here in California. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Marcella Lee is off tonight. I'm Jesse Pagan. While supporters say the move is a long time coming, others say this new law could end up hurting many of the workers it's intended to help. CBS 8's Richard Allen digs into this from both sides. And this major boost to fast food workers minimum wage here in California is set to take effect in April. But already some fast food chains like Pizza Hut are responding by cutting jobs. At first, I was more like, uh, really? After I leave, they decide to do this? San Diego Noah Davidson Mendiola recently quit his job as a shift worker at McDonald's. He's in full support of this move to raise fast food workers' minimum hourly wage to $20 an hour. I'm both happy because fast food workers really don't get paid enough to deal with a lot of the situations, but it's also like, come on, you should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> and while this pay hike applies to fast food businesses with more than 60 locations nationwide, some analysts believe it will spur other businesses to follow suit. Everyone else has to match, right? Because if you can work at McDonald's or Starbucks for $20 an hour, why would you stay at the kitchen at Olive Garden or, or even at Walmart? But not everyone sees this particular move targeting fast food chains as the right one. I wouldn't say I'm particularly in favor of it, but I understand at the same time that so a lot of these people just can't afford to live here. Dale Young is a retired small business owner. He believes more needs to be done to stabilize the overall economy and not just this particular sector of the labor pool. It's a Band-Aid. I mean, I mean, when is it going to stop? I mean, is next year they're going to raise it to $25 an hour? He also points out that this mandatory pay increase will force some businesses to cut jobs to maintain their bottom line. 
Case in point, Pizza Hut, which has announced it will lay off more than 1,200 delivery drivers at hundreds of franchises across the state before this new law takes effect. Its parent company recently told Business Insider, our franchisees independently own and operate their restaurants in according with local market dynamics and comply with all federal, state, and local regulations while continuing to provide quality service and food to our customers via carryout and delivery. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? Now, common sense would dictate that, yes, that's what happens, right? When the cost of labor goes up, which is an operational cost for a business, um, they're going to have to cut jobs in order to compensate, okay? That's what happens. They're going to have to do that or they're going to have to automate. They're going to have to compensate in some way in order to continue to compete. Now, the liberal economists say otherwise. But hey, these are the same liberal economists that claim that uh, illegal immigration is a net positive, that uh, they don't cause crime, uh, that they're not a drain on our resources or our social safety nets, right? However, you have liberal cities like New York City and Chicago boohoo whining and crying about how illegal immigrants are causing crime and they are draining their social safety net and their resources. Again, isn't it amazing how that works, right? It's almost like the liberal economists are not in touch with reality or more so they are propagandists instead of actual economists. Again, because common sense would tell you that when the cost of goods go up due to inflation, uh, that restaurants are going to have to charge more for goods and services okay but no the Biden administration comes out here and say no no these restaurants are price gouging right you don't understand okay um they are just trying to uh jack up the price arbitrarily and it doesn't have anything to do with Bidenomics okay in the current economy however that is not what restaurant owners are saying okay as we have to react to this restaurant owner who is struggling with inflation and he is going to explain from a business perspective again communists and socialists listen carefully here this is like a foreign language to you guys but this restaurant owner is going to explain why he has to charge 16 dollars for a blt sandwich okay he's gonna explain the cost that are associated with running a restaurant and why they have to charge what they have to charge in order to make money so let's see if we can learn anything from this all right, our next guest is a business owner who's been operating restaurants for 14 years. He now says his rent and labor costs are so high, he's got to charge 16 bucks for a sandwich. Brian Will is the man, and he's here right now. Okay, I believe we're talking here about a BLT, right? Will you da break down the cost of a $16 BLT? How do you get to that number? Hey, Stuart, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so a friend of mine had sent me a text the other day asking me why my sandwich costs so much. And I said, hey, let me give you some perspective. This building you're sitting in, the rent is $20,000 a month. My utilities, $6,000 a month. My labor in December, $60,000, which means I've had $86,000 of base cost the day I opened the doors on January 1. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand, $60,000 in labor, okay? $60,000 in labor per month, okay? Do, do people understand that? When the, the people that come out here and talking about how, oh, we need to increase the minimum wage to $25, $30 an hour, right? You do understand that that makes it a lot more expensive for a restaurant to operate, okay? Because that is an operational cost, okay? So when you have... $60,000 in labor to cover, that's a lot of sandwiches, right? You got to sell a lot of sandwiches in order to cover that. So therefore, you have to increase the price of the sandwiches in order to compensate for the increase in cost in labor. Or you're going to have to cut back on costs, okay? AKA less labor, AKA cut jobs, right? Which is why you're saying what you're saying happening in California. Now, let's just say, for example, this guy has $60,000 in labor costs. Let's say... Um, the minimum wage is $15 an hour. Now, if you increase the minimum wage from $15 an hour to $20 an hour, that is a 33% increase approximately, which would bring his total cost of labor up to $80,000 per month, which means he would have to sell even more sandwiches, $20,000 more of sandwiches in order to compensate for uh, the increase in labor costs, okay? Okay. So how are you going to get that $20,000 more? You either magically have to be able to sell more units, okay? Uh, or you're going to have to increase the price in order to get that 
uh, extra 20,000 in order to compensate for the increase in cost of labor, or you're going to have to cut labor, right? When you increase the cost of labor. Again, this is very simple stuff, but let's carry on. You figure in a 32% food cost, I have $11 a gross profit in that sandwich. You take all my costs divided by $11 a gross profit, and I got to sell 93,000 sandwiches just to get to zero before I can make any money. 93,000 sandwiches just to break even. 93,000 sandwiches. That's a whole lot of sandwiches, right? Which is going to require a whole lot of labor hours, okay, in order to produce and to sell those sandwiches, which is why a lot of times, again, you see the increase in cost, okay? The companies will try to increase costs before they try to cut back on labor because, again, you need that labor in order to compensate for actually having to produce all of these sandwiches in these units. Okay, what would the sandwich cost if, it, if the economy were different from the way it is now? If the what was different? Okay, if the, if the economy was different from the way it uh, is now, if you went back to say 2019, yep. before the yep. pandemic, for example, yep. what would the sandwich cost? Yeah, I ran those costs uh, this morning, and we were charging $12.99 for that same sandwich that we're now charging $15.99 for mm. three years later. Mm. And are all, I'm, I'm talking now about a BLT, uh, like uh, ham and cheese. Bacon, that, lettuce, tomato. Yep. It, yep. Is that 16 bucks for ham and cheese? It's $16 because of the cost. My wholesale cost is only $5 in that sandwich. Yeah, I might have to call cap on that, right? Wholesale cost of $5 a sandwich? I don't know, man. I feel like... I could make a banging BLT at home for way less than $5, but who knows, right? Maybe not Biden's economy, okay? Maybe maybe not, but I'm just saying, I, I don't know if it's gotten that bad yet where, you know, I can't make a BLT at home for less than $5, but that better be, again, one of the best BLTs ever, right? I'm, I'm imagining that this is probably more of a gourmet BLT, okay? It has to be, okay, for $5 wholesale. But again, I'm not surprised. Depending on what part of the country you're in, Maybe, just maybe, uh, it does cost $5 to produce uh, a sandwich at wholesale. But you got to cover all your operational expenses, and that's why it drives that cost up. Which includes labor, right? Which is why, again, the whole minimum wage thing really gets me because, you know, leftists are, you know, they're so surprised and they're shocked that, oh, man, California, they have to cut jobs, right? They have to cut jobs uh, because we've increased the minimum wage. It's like, well, yeah, because you've increased the operational cost, right? And they'll cost more to run the business. So, yeah, they either have to... Uh, cut jobs or they have to increase prices. In, in some cases, they're having to do both. Did you, how much did you say is rent per month for each operation you've got? That one is $20,000 a month in that location. It's in a new mixed-use development, so it costs a lot to be there. That has gone up a lot recently? Well, the rent is a fixed uh, increase each year, but you have to understand, we signed our lease pre-COVID with fixed increases every year, and I have a personal guarantee so my rent isn't going down. It's going up every year forever. But I'm now dealing with a different economy than I was then, which means my revenue per operation has dropped about $350,000 per store. AKA less people are buying uh, the BLTs, right? Less people are buying sandwiches because probably they have to raise costs and people have less money to spend. Okay, things are objectively uh, more expensive. So therefore, again, you have an increase in cost because the cost of goods are going up. And then you also have a decrease in revenue because of the state of the economy. People aren't buying as many of these sandwiches or they're not eating out because it's too expensive. They have to cut costs. Again, it's like a, it's a, it's a double whammy, okay? While my rent has gone up, labor's up 30%, insurance is up 40%, rent's up 10%. It's incredible what my well, costs have gone up over the last three years. Are you considering closing any of your outlets? No, no, no. So this is a misconception. So when I say 1.5 million is my break even, that restaurant does 2.5 million. So my profit margin above break even is really is good. Most mm. restaurants fail, however, because they never reach their minimum break even point and they can't get to that profitability range. This is fascinating. One last question. What's the price of your most expensive sandwich? Uh, probably 19.99 for a salmon, uh, a jerk salmon sandwich. Yeah. Jerks, I'll remember that. Uh, Brian Will, thanks for joining us. We, we do sympathize with your situation, and I'm glad I'm not in the sandwich business. Uh, Brian, come back and see us soon, please. All good stuff. Thanks, Stuart. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I can imagine that's a damn good sandwich, right? Because <laughs> this guy is staying in business, okay? He still seems to be making decent money. But regardless, 
You're um, so that is close. the reason why uh, you're seeing the increase in uh, costs, right? This is what you're seeing as a result of Bidenomics, okay? And it's not just Bidenomics, but when you have these liberal policies that demand minimum wage increases for workers that, you know, people would define as, you know, on the lower scale, okay, end of the spectrum. Yeah, this is what happens. This is the result. Right. You have to cut back on jobs or you have to increase prices in order to compensate. And then people want to boohoo whine and complain about essentially what they voted for. Right. When common sense would have told you that, hey, this is the result of liberal policy. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.